Vinegar powders are a great way to add a new layer of flavor to all your dishes. And today on WTF, we're going to look at all six of our vinegar powders and some great uses for them. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, the owner of Modernist Pantry. Today, Scott and I are going to be covering vinegar powders, of which, as you can see, we have quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go over what exactly they are, why you might want to use them in place or in addition to a recipe where that might call for traditional vinegar. And then also, of course, as always, tons of demos to show you how you can use them in your own kitchen. So Scott, why don't we start off with maybe um, like a quick overview of the vinegar powders. What are they and sure. what do we have? All right, so we have six different types. We have cider, malt, white, red wine vinegar. Uh, the white vinegar is not white wine, it's just white distilled vinegar. Mm -hmm. uh, balsamic and rice vinegar. So those are a pretty vast different amount of flavors that you can add to different dishes. And the reason you would want to use this as opposed to just regular vinegars uh, probably best example is the dry rub here. If I'm making a dry rub, I really can't get any uh, acidity into it. I can't get any apple cider vinegar into mm -hmm. it. But with the apple cider vinegar powder, I can. Right. And why, if you have a vinegar powder, and I know that because we do sell uh, quite, a, quite a bit of them, when people say like, well, why would I want a vinegar powder and it doesn't taste quite as strong as the regular vinegar, what's going on there? So this is actually real vinegar that has been you know, spray dried um, and it's not an artificial flavor. So sometimes you get those artificial flavors in, let's just say potato chips mm -hmm. uh, that are really powerful, super potent, extremely acidic. Um, these are tr real flavors, real vinegar that's been spray dried and just mixed with maltodextrin. So it's you know, a free flowing agent. Yeah. And speaking of maltodextrin, the other, I think, regularly asked question, uh, and I think kind of a misconception really, is that yeah. people will say, why is there fillers in my vinegar? Um, what is the distinction, I guess, between, you know, what maltodextrin is being used in this particular case versus, uh, I guess, what people commonly refer to as fillers? Yeah, so this is not a filler in this case. This is actually serving a purpose. Uh, the vinegar powder is, you know, was once a liquid, so mm -hmm. it really likes liquid. Any humidity in the air would turn this back into a liquid, so the maltodextrin is there to protect it, mm -hmm. so it does not turn back into a liquid uh, until you add water to it. Yeah, and if you do purchase one of our vinegar powders, you are going to see like a few different ingredients mm -hmm. on the back, and I think they pretty much are all just flow agents to help yep. with you know that the, the ability for you to use it as a powder. Yes. So yep. you know, don't worry about it. It's all good. You know, like they're not there just to, I don't know, dilute the flavor or exactly. whatever it is that sometimes people will say. And these do have the flavor of of the vinegars, full on. Like it's it's not that it's not there at all. It's these taste like the vinegars, they taste more natural than the artificial flavors. So. Yep, and if you're wondering how much to use, there is a little bit of a variation between them, so each one will have um, what their particular usage is on the back of their packages. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. so that's, the, that's one of the things too, is people don't necessarily know what to use them on or how mm -hmm. to use them, so I would follow that, but also it's very simple. Wherever you would use vinegar, you can add a completely different um, texture or idea to the to the dish by mm. adding it. And one really simple one is a caprese salad, where you usually drizzle over the balsamic. You can actually sprinkle over the powder mm -hmm. and it will turn into balsamic or when people eat it, they'll get that flavor of balsamic in a different way. So it's yeah. a cool little thing you can do. Well, that's a really nice way to kind of deconstruct that salad. Yeah. All right, and I know we have a couple of demos. I think some of our favorite foods here. What do we have? So it, we're in the thick of summer. This is a good yes. thing. and. Uh, we have two of my favorite foods, so French fries and pulled pork. Yes. Uh, so what I did with the pulled pork, and we can talk about it in a little bit, is I just made a rub, like I said before, that has the apple cider vinegar powder. Mm -hmm. But right now I'm going to get into making the French fries. And these are borrowed from Heston Blumenthal. And these are his triple cooked fries, so you, mm. you boil them until they're just soft. You freeze them solid, and as you freeze them, it releases a bunch of the water. Mm -hmm. And you fry them once at a low temperature, and then you fry them at a high temperature, and you freeze them in between there. Okay. Uh, and they are just so unbelievably crispy. But the cool thing that we're doing to them is that we're actually adding the uh, malt vinegar powder to some salt, 
uh, a little bit of malic acid, a little bit of black pepper. So we're making mm -hmm. salt and vinegar chips mm. uh, out of french fries or chips, depending on where you are. So, yeah. so I'm going to take these. And the best part about these at 375, they only take about a minute to a minute and a half to fry. Okay. So a really simple way. I'm just going to get those in. So you've already done two steps out of oh, three. Oh, yeah. We're not okay. doing all the steps on here. We'd mm -hmm. be... This would be the longest WTF episode ever. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to let those fry for about a minute. Okay. So with the, bull, with the pulled pork, I made the rub. All the recipes for both of these are going to be in the description below. They're mm -hmm. on our blog, so just follow those links and then you can go right to our blog. Okay. Um, so I made the pulled pork rub. There's a number of ingredients. I, I couldn't possibly name all of them. Uh, but there's, you know, chilies and salt and sugar. And then I rubbed it on the pork. I gave it about you know 12 to 18 hours. Mm. Took it out and I roasted it low and slow. If you wanted to smoke it, you could absolutely just sub in the uh, cooking method of smoking it. Mm -hmm. But I roasted it low and slow until it was fall apart tender. And then I actually took some of that rub and I sprinkled it over the top of each sandwich. And I made a special ketchup. Now there isn't a recipe for the ketchup, but mm. if people like this and they want yes. it, you can make this. And this is like a, a ketchup barbecue. Ooh. So, so a really simple ketchup barbecue. So you make a beautiful ketchup from scratch, then you add in the rub and it really makes it beautiful. And you just put a little bit on the sandwiches. You don't need to overdo it because the pork is delicious. Right. So. And uh, as you're frying that, I know a common question that we get here is people want to know, I, I got my pork shoulder, how long do I cook it for? What, do, yeah. do we have any advice for them on that? We do have advice for them. We actually wrote an Ask a Chef, because uh, we got a few questions about that, mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily how long to cook per poundage, because right. I'm sure we've all heard those, uh, you know, cook your turkey for 20 minutes per pound, mm -hmm. uh, and if it's 20 pounds, that's going to take forever. That's going to ruin the bird that you're trying to cook and mm -hmm. ruin the food. So it's actually more about you know the temp and the process and getting it to the right temperature for the right cooking process mm -hmm. uh, to really you know make sure that this is not you know medium rare, but it's also not tough. Right. So it depends on the muscle, and you can go there and you can really ask a chef to yeah. kind of figure that out. Yep. If you haven't looked at Ask a Chef, it is on the blog. The link is in the description mm -hmm. below, and you can access that particular Ask a Chef as well as many more Ask a Chefs. Yes. <laughs> Great, so these are getting pretty close. Yay. They're looking really beautiful, golden brown. So I'm going to take these out, just going to pop them in, and then we're going to be able to get our uh, vinegar, salt and vinegar powder onto them. You know, and what I like about it is actually, I was just at a, a barbecue place in Freeport, Maine the other night, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the friends that we, that we were with said, they're like, oh, I love putting malt vinegar on my chips, but then they make them soggy. They make them soggy, soggy exactly. exactly. And I just want to be like, but there's malt vinegar powder. <laughs> I, I, I held back but and wait, I did yeah. not do it, but it's what I was thinking because I knew we were going to be shooting. I was like, oh, it's, it's, such a, you know, it's such a true thing. You can put it on your fries. You can put it on potato chips. So really anything where you just want that, that kind of a pop, right? Yeah, so it's very simple. Uh, you're not adding moisture to them. And if you're adding moisture to them, they're going to get soggy, mm -hmm. right? So I'm just going to sprinkle on some of my malt vinegar powder. I'm going to toss them. Now these french fries, they don't necessarily need ketchup. They're mm -hmm. delicious as they are. But I made some because they go hand in hand. So we have a very simple but delicious way to have a sandwich and french fries using our vinegar powder, mm -hmm. which if you wanted to eat one of these, you can, Jamie, but they're going to be... I'm going to burn my mouth. Do it for the views. I will. And just because I like really hot fries. If you d dunk it in the ketchup, it'll be I good. Know. But you really want to taste that uh, salt and vinegar kind of chip. Okay. I'm going to do both so I'm not like double All dipping right. here and being gross. That sounds good. So I'll do it as well. Mmm. Oh, they're so good. Crispy as can be, right? Mm-hmm. And then just so puffy and fluffy on the inside. Mm -hmm. It's almost like mashed potatoes. Mm hmm Oh, exactly. These are so good. <laughs> I don't regret burning my fingers at all. <laughs> <laughs> great. I think um, we hit almost everything on vinegar powders. They're a really great ingredient mm -hmm. to spice up any dish uh, that you don't want to add any extra moisture to, but you want that kind of acidic flair um, that, you know, you just don't want to add that moisture. That's really the biggest thing. If you're trying to cut down on that moisture, something crispy like this, you want that acidity, use the vinegar powder. Yeah. And I would say a lot of people like to make their own spice rubs. This would be a great addition to kind of, you mm -hmm. know, like play around with your spice rubs, put a little bit of something in to just kind of yep. give it that different flavor profile that might enhance what you are already doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. 
Yeah. So if you have any questions about vinegar powders, write in about it. Oh, also on the blog, we do have a comparison chart about the vinegar yes, powders you for your reference if you're not sure how much to use or you're just trying to decide which one you might want to use. So that's all available. The link is in the description below. Yeah. yeah. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garrett. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And turn that bell on because it notifies you when we drop a new video. If you like any of today's recipes, go to blog.modernistpantry.com. There you'll find recipes, ask a chefs, and tips and tricks, and more. If you have a friend who you think would like this video, share it with them. And to get any of these great ingredients, just go to our website, www.modernistpantry.com. And until next time, We'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences.